Welcome to this video where we're going to look at using the new Microsoft Assessment Platform version 7 for performing uh, virtual desktop infrastructure sizing on Hyper-V. So as part of starting this process we need to um, launch the Microsoft Assessment Platform first and we need to prepare our environment for being able to produce the data. Now with the Microsoft Assessment Platform one of the things that you would normally do is you would go and inventory your estate, you would then actually run some performance analysis and you would then be able to use the sizing guides. I'm actually going to use the sample database that Microsoft provide which uh, is available for download from their website. So at this moment I'm just importing the database and giving the database a name. So VDI demo and we'll then be able to use the information already stored in this database for the sizing purposes. So just confirm that uh, we want to sort of upgrade this database actually from the MAP6 tool so uh, there's a few changes to the database structure. So hopefully this will import the database successfully. Having completed the database import we can obviously OK the message and close the database management uh, dialog and we can now tell the system to use an existing database. So we can select that database. And as we can see from the status screen, initial inventories have been performed and performance data has been uh, collected. What we care about is actually running the desktop work uh, workload model section down the bottom. So just to confirm, you can actually see we've got a number of machines that have been inventoried. See some of them we don't have some data for, but that doesn't matter for what we're looking at here. So we need to go through the assessment process. So if we just quickly look at the machines that have been inventoried, uh, you can actually see that we've got a range of operating systems. So we've got some server operating systems, some workstation operating systems in here where performance data has been collected. So the first thing we're going to look at is configuring the hardware library. The reason we want to look at configuring the hardware library is this allows us to tell the assessment platform the type of infrastructure we're going to be expecting to run our platform on. So if I select one of the existing ones, you can actually see here that it lists processor type, number of CPUs, number of cores, how much memory, um, disk I.O. performance, network throughput. So here we could actually create um, a brand new uh, uh, template uh, based on the hardware that we're actually going to purchase. So I'm going to go and create a, a, a template for the, my VDI uh, hardware. I can then basically suggest that I want to uh, either create this as a, a, an infrastructure uh, model which is an optional step. This is not used by the uh, VDI engine. The infrastructure model is where you use when you're building cloud-based solutions. So I can actually go and choose the processor type, I can choose the processor model and then I can specify how many cores, the speed of each processor and, and, and so on if I want to. So you can either do the quick select um, by using the drop down options as I am here. Alternatively if the processor you're using is not in the list you can actually put in the specific speed, number of cores um, by filling the drop down boxes. Obviously some processors in this instance might give you a choice, so this particular processor obviously can come in a 2 core or a 4 core variant, so I'm just going to go and choose 4 core. Here I can specify the um, IOPS uh, for my storage, so what's the maximum number of IOPS a second that I can actually uh, handle through my storage and the total amount of storage that is available to me in gigabytes. So again I can specify these parameters. So we'll just put in 2,000 IOPS uh, per second and we'll say that we've got 2,048 gigabytes of storage. You've then got uh, an option for how much uh, network throughput you can support. So uh, total sort of network uh, transmission and also you can define the uh, memory for the host machine. So how much RAM is the host machine going to have? So having built a, a, a hardware model, I can save those hardware model settings. Now I could obviously use any of the sample ones as, as well as create my own hardware models uh, as part of the planning. So I now want to go and create what we call a desktop 
workload model. So when I create a desktop workload model, this effectively allows me to identify the workload or workloads which are going to be representative of what my VDI infrastructure is going to do. So I've created a workstation model and you can see here that all the workstation operating systems that have been inventoried and I've collected performance statistics for have now been presented to me inside this tool. So I can choose to select all the machines or any combination of the machines. So effectively that allows me to benchmark the performance of real workstations and actually then use that information when I'm sizing my VDI. So I can now go in and actually run the uh, desktop virtualization planning tool. I can select my model that I've just created and actually say do I want to take the values for those workstations as average values or do I want to take those values as peak performance values. I can then tell the system how many systems I intend to provision, so a thousand desktops and I can now tell the system what hardware I intend to use. So I can select obviously any of the hardware options that I have available to me. If I want to I can then specify how much of the resource can be consumed by the workloads. So obviously what this is allowing me to do is reserve processor, memory, CPU bandwidth for the host operating system, uh, maybe for management purposes. When I complete that activity the system will then go off and it will actually perform the calculations for me. Now I did actually select one of the sample entries uh, in the system. The reason I selected one of the sample entry entries is I want to see how, show you how the system sort of makes some decisions. So now having completed the planning I can go to the desktop virtualization section which tells me I've completed all the tasks um, and I can look at the various reports. So the first thing I have is a report based on Windows Fin PC readiness. So this is highlighting based on all of the machines that I've inventoried are they capable of running Windows Fin PC if I wanted to turn them into Fin clients. The second bit allows me to see my uh, VDI model that I created so I've got the workload library and then I've actually got the uh, output from the um, report wizard so we can see here for virtualization host the first column in the top table that to support my 1000 uh, virtual desktops it actually expects me to use 143 uh, physical hosts with an average of seven desktops uh, per physical computer Again, I get some breakdown of the workload um, and the host configuration that I selected. I've gone over onto the right hand side and hit the generate report option. So this allows me to get access to some more detailed reports that allow me to understand why I can only get seven virtual machines per physical host. So if I open up the Excel report that's been generated for me, it take just a few seconds to open. We can now review the settings. So again, the summary tab just really defines the number of systems that I entered into the uh, wizard, and the second, uh, the workload details tab shows me the uh, workload load I'm expecting to see on the physical host, and the third tab, the host machine details, shows me the physical specification of the machine that I selected. So I did choose the machine, um, which was the sample VDI host. So if we go across um, to the session uh, virtualization details tab, that would show me if I was going to be using RDS virtualization. Here I'm using VDI, so I can actually see uh, effectively each host listed down the left hand side and how many virtual machines will be created on each host and what would be the CPU utilization. Now, what's the most important thing is at the end you can actually see why it tells told me that a host has been maxed out. So we can see there, based on the amount of disk space that each virtual machine is going to consume, I've actually exceeded the disk space storage in each of the host profiles. So it's actually had to create um, a new host to support additional virtual machines because based on the hard disk capacity, I've, I've run out of space. So that's why for each of the 143 hosts that are listed I've only got seven virtual machines on each host be because of that restriction so it would easily allow me to go back into the system 
and obviously create a new uh, hardware profile and actually increase the hard disk space. So if I go back into the system and obviously choose my thousand desktops and choose my VDI hardware entry. Okay, again obviously I could leave the sort of ceiling parameters in the same. Obviously this instance has more storage available to it. Okay. So what we should see is we should see a change to the consolidation ratio that's available to me. So hopefully if we go into the desktop virtualization and planning you can now see the number of hosts has actually changed to 21 uh, and therefore I'm actually getting uh, 48 virtual desktops per host. If I generate the reports again, same as before, and then we go and open the report, what we should be able to see is in the latest copy of the report, again, what, what was the limiting factor? What did we run out of again in terms of specifying the number of hosts? So we'll just wait for the report to load. So there's the report loaded. So again, obviously, we can see that we've got a different specification for the physical host machine. So uh, significantly, obviously, I've chosen my um, VDI host system. Here, when we go to the VDI details, we can actually see 48 hosts per virtual machine, also per physical machine. And this time again, we can still see the reason is I've actually hit the disk space limit. So I've now basically consumed the two terabytes of disk space that I've allocated to each physical machine. So again, if I wanted to get a greater density, I could allocate more disk space to each machine. So that's just a quick look at using the virtualization planning tool that becomes as part of the map utility. Hopefully that's uh, been a useful demonstration for you, for being able to see how you can use that tool, A, to de determine what hardware specification you might want, uh, and B, to actually sort of try and predict the level of d density that you might actually be able to achieve based on actual performance of your workstations that are in your existing environment today. Thank you for your time.